and we are also recording live on various platforms. Welcome to Shifty Perspective. We are now on episode eight, so thank you for everybody who has tuned in to all of the episodes so far. It's been so much fun. Uh, today we are joined with Dr. Z. This man is very famous or infamous to some as the uh, creator or discoverer of some very exciting compounds, often referred to as legal highs. So, Dr. Z, how are you doing? I'm good. Hey. Thank you. The, uh, the, yeah. the mask I, I, is gone. I, I, You're... Actually, actually, let me, let me, um, let me make that statement um, a little bit more precise. Yes. Um, so the, the polite answer is I'm good, I'm fine, um, everything's okay. Uh, but the precise answer is I have no idea. <laughs> really? Yeah, you don't I have no idea. I have no idea. I would like to think that I am, uh, uh, that I have had um, COVID-19, uh, okay. I, but I don't really know um, what that is. So there's- Have you had symptoms? Have you been sick? I, yeah, uh, yes, but that could be anything. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the point. That um, how, how do you know that someone has had COVID nineteen? I guess um, the, I mean there are there are tests, the antibody tests and the antigen tests to see if you have had it or if you're immune to it, right? Or yeah, but they test for the GI proteins um, in um, that are that are quite generic in the immune system, they're, they're, they are tweaked per disease um, in yeah. order, uh, and only the, the, the tip of the Y at the end of the, it's a Y-shaped protein, and the, okay. the, the tip of the pincers um, will change its sequence per disease. And I, do, I have not heard that these proteins have been subjected to Edmund degradation in order to understand that they are specific to COVID-19. So hmm. um, it just means you're down with something. And there's a, there's a wide range of things that it could be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and that's why I think the numbers are so high, including yeah. the fact that there's a lot of incentive for um, hospitals to treat, they get more money if they're treating somebody with COVID because there's so much funding going on. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, that's why I, um, I, I, I started the interview with my mask on because I think that um, more than anything, COVID-19 is, is uh, digitally transmutable. You think it's digitally transmutable, so you didn't want to well, pass I mean, it over to me. <laughs> everybody's <laughs> uh, hiding under the table just from hearing about it on the radio. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Oh, um, let, let, can we just uh, let, can we wind back quite a bit sure. and just uh, for anyone who doesn't know who you are, I mean, I obviously gave a little bit of introduction. Could you could you just describe your kind of history briefly? You know, um, your education, how you got into science, and and what brought you to to where you are now. Um, um I uh, started. Um uh, I, I, I started by uh, studying for a bachelor's degree in mathematics. Okay. Um, I went on to do a master's in computer science. Uh, and then I got a job working for a company which eventually um, ended up writing the code that is now um, uh, driving uh, voice over IP, which is what we're using for this interview. Great, um, and also Skype, and um, uh, you know um, things, things like um, WhatsApp, etc. The, the, mm -hmm. the G seven two three um, codec. Yeah, uh, uh, and that, and then I was pretty good at that, and I got promoted um, according to the Peter principle um, to something that I. Um, uh, well, it, it wasn't that I wasn't very good at it. It, it was just I found it um, uh, uh, so depressing that I wanted to take my own life. And um, 
I, what I did instead was just started um, drinking on the job, uh, which was kind of fun. <sighs> uh, <laughs> but not proactive, not, not, uh, not, not good for your uh, output, I guess, or did it help? Um, uh, uh, yeah, it helped. It helped. I, I, it didn't help the depression. Um, so I was looking at the classifieds and they, I, and, and realized that, uh, that they were seeking mathematicians to work on the human genome project. <laughs> um, so I went for an interview. I got, uh, I got hired. Uh, it, 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 I think it would be interesting for some listeners to know that the, um, even though the brunt of the, uh, of the Human Genome Project was um, uh, w- 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 was driven by uh, the polymerase chain reaction. The polymerase chain reaction um, terminates after uh, four thousand uh, base pairs. So, and now our chromosomes are millions of base pairs long, mm-hmm. um, and you have to you have to um, uh, line them up according to their sequence alignment where you have a match of, of a long enough match of sequences, you can say, okay, so actually the end of this sequence is the beginning of this sequence because there's, there's a 300 base pair match which couldn't occur. Um, How are you finding this match? I mean, uh, like, is this individually? That that's why they needed mathematicians. Okay. That's, that's called sequence homology. Um, uh oh, I've got a phone call. I should have muted that. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. All right. Um, and I'll mute incoming calls. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so you're working on the secret genome sequencing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we finished the the the, the human genome project. Um, uh, actually, uh, th- th- there was a race between Celera. Um, the, the company in California and all of the um, hundred or more labs around the world that were working on the same to complete the same task and we lost okay. um, Solero one um, then um, I went on to work on the plant genome project um, where the company that I was working for uh, um, got into the uh, uh, spotlight of Monsanto, um, wow. and um, and we got a big deal with Monsanto, which brought me much much closer to the. Um, well, we were doing mostly genetic engineering, but but uh, um, it 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 got me very close to the pathways involved with. Um, either resistance to or the creation of um, uh, 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 phytopathogens um, or 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 um, uh, phytoinsecticides. So uh, that kind of got me closer to the um, uh, the, the world of synthetic chemistry. Mm-hmm. And then I read Tikal and Pikal. Yeah. Um, and then I, um, and then I was invited to a, um, uh, a, a, uh, a cat leaf suing, uh, chewing ceremony. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at this now, point, had you not done any, you never tried drugs. You were just working purely as a, as a scientist, mathematician, and you, you, you don't drank alcohol. That was all or? No, no, I, 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 I think that I had a bit of a cocaine problem. Oh, okay. I think I, yeah, yeah. And then, and then um, I tried these cat leaves and, um, and, and, and I think the two things came together quite miraculously, or three things came together quite miraculously from this encounter. The first thing was I ran out of money. Well, if you have a cocaine problem. <laughs> yeah, easily done. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, the second thing is, I realized that cat was um, more enjoyable 
than cocaine without that grumpiness, which I will explain if you ask me, why do you think that happened? I will say, well, to, in hindsight, I can, I can tell you um, why uh, um, it, I think that as a rule, a, um, a, a receptor agonist will be a much better, um, a, a, a neurotransmitter receptor agonist will be much better than that corresponding uh, neurotransmitters uh, reuptake inhibitor. Um, for any neuro, neurotransmitter, if you if you want to go deeper into that, I'll explain why. Yeah. Um, and the third thing that uh, dawned on me was that the active compound in the cat plant was actually legal <laughs> in in Israel. And, and I, that's and where you're I, from originally. Yeah. 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 And I read the law um, over and over and over again. I just couldn't believe it. I, I was like, what? Wait a minute. It's obviously better. People know about this. And it's legal. <laughs> and, um, uh, so I, uh, uh, I, I went deeper into the chemistry and I found that it was actually really, really, really easy to do. Wow. Um, now, let me tell you how easy. I uh, flew to India um, found a broker that matches up people from the West with different companies. So he takes you on a, on a tour. Um, now it's, it's kind of like uh, the corresponding American tours, but the food is on you. So if you get <laughs> like, a, um, you know, if you, if, if you get off at one of the stops and you get um, uh, uh, a samosa, then yeah. you pay for it. It's not, yeah, but that's that, not that's included all. on the tour. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. So, so, um, so I sat down with one of the companies. I, I looked at their methods. I, I saw that they were, um, uh, that they were very attractive. Uh, I went back to Israel. I started corresponding with them and, um, and it turned out that they would be offering me if I would, be ordering over 50 kilograms of the material, they would be offering it at, just take a guess. Uh, oh, is this per kilo? Um, yeah. I'm guessing, I don't know, a few hundred, a few hundred dollars. 28. $28. So it's $28 per kilo, $28, not $2,800. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so we, and no one else in the world at this point, this, this was just you had come across this and, and discovered, worked this out. Um, and just through essentially chewing the plant and real, well, you know, from taking part in chewing cuts and, and, and having no money. And yeah. that it's that I think the most difficult part of this story is to read the law because yeah. later on when, um, when this started becoming a standard practice, and certain compounds were becoming illegal and people were being caught with um, uh, um, compounds that neither they nor the police knew that they were legal. It's like, we found you with a bag of, of white powder. Mm -hmm. You're going to jail. And then, oh no, but Z said it's legal. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was called to consult um, to give advice on, uh, you know, um, very many um, uh, court cases. Was this and on both sides? Like, did you give, uh, was this, were you ever, were you consulted by governments for advice ever on? No, you know, no, no, by defendants. By defendants. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and, um, and it turns out that to find a lawyer that, uh, can read that part of the law, which is the, um, the, the scheduled list is, is, um, it's close to impossible in, in <laughs> most any country that it, like in Australia, there's two in Great Britain. There's probably more I, uh, in, in places like, um, uh, um, Czech Republic, there's one, um, in, in countries, there, there are some countries where you can't find a single lawyer. It's crazy. That, 
that, w that, that will get to the drug law of that country, which was just copied from usually the UK drug law or something, or, or, or another, and, and they'll get to the chemical part and say, well, I don't know if what you've taken, uh, if what you've been caught with is one of these things in, it's one of the things in this list, or it's not. I just don't know how to read this. Well, find somebody who knows, and even that, even that pro can prove to be impossible. Yeah. So there's, you just, you're blamed with selling white powder. Well, what if it's sugar? Who can yeah. tell you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that that was the most um, that was the most difficult part. Um, so you you went you returned to Israel though with so with your first uh, twenty. No, no, no. That 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 flew in by FedEx. And and then um, what you you had a lab you were still working at this point. Um, no, the, uh, the lab was in India. Yeah, they were flying. Um, uh, they were sending it in uh, it, uh, with the chemical name. Mm -hmm. um, as chemicals arrive, you know, um, they were it was being looked up and passed through because there was no problem. And this is the point where I began to. Uh, to come to the um, the the, the a, a a rule of thumb which I would now dare call um, uh, Z's law, which is uh, um, that if you are to import um, more than one kilo per one hundred thousand people of population of a substance per year, yeah. you will bring the country to its knees. And, um, okay, so let's calculate. Um, we brought 700 kilos, multiply that by um, 100,000. Yeah. Um, so multiply by um, 10, you get 7 million, right? Mm -hmm. Multiply by 100, you get 70 million. The yeah. population of Israel at the time was about 5.5 million. Um, so yeah. at this point, there's no control over like, so this has been brought in just purely the, the chemical is brought in and, um, you brought in as the name, it was a uh, four MMC, right? Mephedrone. No, 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 no. That was, that, that was, um, that was two amino propionone. It was the original cathinone, the, 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 the chemical that is present in the cat plant. Okay. Um, so then, uh, uh, to then begin to make changes um, and offer the market synthetic compounds, yeah. that's, that's not just a different part of the story. That's volume two. Mm -hmm. That is like okay. a whole new, you know, the, the, the whole idea behind that. Um, you have to make uh, two leaps of faith, um, one on your part and one on the consumer's part. Yeah. The f so, um, in 2004, The Guardian published a, um, do you want a link? Should yes, I put please. It in yeah, that would be great. Yep. Um, the Guardian, okay. Let me just find it. Uh, 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 um, uh. So um, whilst you're finding that, actually, I've just, uh, someone, one of the uh, listeners watches right now, just asked a question saying, is this, um, I guess, about the lawyers because they don't want to defend or because it's complex or is it because they just don't understand simply? Simply because they don't understand. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Uh, ah, here we are. Okay, so we have from 2004. Um, should I put it on the... Um, yeah, if you put it on there and then I can do a screen share so everybody can see. Wait, wait. Well, how do I... Participants and... There we go. There you go. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to just open this up and do a yeah. screen share. Um, so share screen. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, uh, can you see... My screen now. 
Uh, I can. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is. Um... Just uh, just tick the X so that we we can see more of the screen. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, right X. Right. Yeah. Except so, the there we go. Drugs and yeah. dances. Israelis blot out intifada. Nightlife yeah. in Tel Aviv on par with the best in London, New York. So right. look, th look this the article. Day. September 4th, uh, Saturday, September 4th, 2004. Yeah. 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 So, so were you was, expecting this? Oh, no. I, I was, my friends brought this to me and said, dude, you made The Guardian. <laughs> um, which was like, you, you know, um, we knew you were a, a troublemaker as long as, as far as, um, you know, uh, 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 local stories go, but it's this is international. This is a whole um, yeah, uh, yeah. This is a whole different sketch. So that's that's the first time that I was implicitly mentioned in the Guardian. That's the um, the second time uh, that the Guardian mentioned me was I think ten years later uh, when they wrote. Um, when they wrote this. I think I know exactly which, uh, which article this is. Um, let me just do the screen share of this as well, share screen. Um, yeah, so everybody watching can see this right now. Um, again, as the X has appeared, let me close that. Yes, this is the one, the, Dr. Z, the godfather of legal highs. <laughs> I right, test everything right. on myself. That, that was 12 years later. Meow, meow. <laughs> So th yeah. I think this is the, that's the name that anybody watching this who is not really um, involved or aware that much of uh, legal highs will still know about because that that's mm -hmm. definitely a household name I would say that made that was in the papers a lot meow. Yeah, it was. Yeah, well, um, the the in the previous article the word hagigat was in the papers um, much much more in Israel in Hebrew. Uh, mm -hmm. If you go. And tell people if you, and ask people if they want any meow meow in Israel, um, they won't know what you're talking about. But if you ask them if they if they want hagigat, hagigat, oh, oh yes, please, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, different names. Mm. And and what happened with with that? Like you were doing, you were selling this legally, and then um, at what point? When did that did that get banned internationally? So what or what happened? Law? What happened was that. They didn't know how to stop it because they didn't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Then um, uh, an Israeli newspaper um, called Haaretz, a... Um, yeah, I know the one. Uh, a, a, a journalist by the name of Edith Avrahami interviewed me. Mm, and um, in that interview, I told her that uh, I, I told her what the name of the compound was. Um, and then I saw that there was a, mm, and I told her that it came from cat leaves. Yeah. And that it, it, being a natural product, it wasn't, there were, there were two problems here. First of all, it's a natural product. And the second thing it was, it's real, it's ritualistically used traditionally by the Yemenite community, which is a, which is a kind of, both respected and oppressed minority in the country of Israel. Yes, yeah. So nobody wanted to step on their tradition. It was, it was very, and, and in the end of the law that presides today says that um, cathinone is illegal unless it, it appears in leaves intended for chewing. <laughs> Okay, so the law exempts that um, uh, uh, that that traditional ritual, yeah. even until today. Huh. Yeah. So people, you can still get hold of because I know that in the UK, cat. I remember there was quite a bit of an outcry when cat was not inclu was included in the um, NPS ban in the UK. So that um, yeah, there were a lot of minorities yeah. in the UK that chewed that traditionally and were not allowed. Right, the the Somalis, mm -hmm. uh, the Ethiopians, yeah, 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 and and um, and the Yemenites, um, the Yemenites in Israel, they have fields and fields and fields of this. And every if you want to get mm, 
Okay, so let's say that there's coronavirus and uh, you lost your job and you've got a lot of energy and you want to work for something, right? Yeah. And you're in the UK, so you go and work for some company that does food deliveries or alcohol deliveries. If you've got a moped, uh, you're making more money than you were when, mm -hmm. you know, before the pandemic hit. But in Israel, what you'll be delivering on Friday nights is bags of leaves. <laughs> yeah, door to door. No here you go, here you go, here you go. The faster you can get there, um, the bigger the tip. But isn't cat a very mild stimulant? Like if you were to chew the actual leaves, isn't it? It's like chewing coca leaves or um, caffeine, essentially. Um, I, I, I think that it's a lot like sex, you know? It really, really depends how you do it, how <laughs> long you do it, how, um, you know, um, uh, what toys you use, how kinky your partner. <laughs> it, 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 it really, it has a very, very broad spectrum of effect. Okay. Sex, you know, short and, 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 um, um, uh, without that many interesting features, yeah. or it can be like, whoa! I've just, I've just had an experience that I, um, uh, that I, I couldn't dream of. Yeah, right? transcendence. <laughs> Oh, of course. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah I mean, oh, oh, you've been out with uh, Spanish girls. <laughs> Israelis. <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I've, no, I've never, I've never met an, uh, well, You've never dated an Israeli? I have not, no. Okay. Do um, Israelis have a fi fiery, fiery passion and uh, are, they, are they wild? Is that? Yes. I've yes. heard t Tel Aviv is quite the uh, party, party city, I've heard. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Open all night. Uh, you make friends quickly. Um, they take you home quickly. There are interesting things happen, um, and and things that you you it, it, that are really really hard to imagine. Um, <laughs> Is that yeah. because everyone's chewing cat leaves, and they were taking? <laughs> um, it, it, there there are a lot of reasons. There are yeah. a lot of reasons, but, but but generally, I think that when when you grow up with the understanding that when you are 18 years of age, you will be drafted into a military machine and then you serve. Um, uh, and and, and uh, you have to be creative, you know, in order to get food, in order to get sleep, in order to get water, in order to, mm. to, to make sense of the complete um, madness that's going on around you. Yeah. You get a population of people that are like, that can party pretty well. Yeah. You know? <laughs> cool. Did, uh, did you get your name in, uh, in, in Israel or was that from the guardian? Dr. Z. That was from Dan Reed. Dan Reed is, um, is a, is a four time BAFTA winner, uh, director. Yep. who uh, made a film. I'll put a link, just a moment. Um, Was this Legally High? Legally High. Aha, uh -huh, yes, I, I watched that. I remember seeing that. Okay, so we'll <laughs> let me find it. Let me find it. Um, Anyone in the UK might remember this uh, Channel 4 documentary about mm, yeah. eight so years, I'm, I believe. I'm going to give you a link to his, um, to Dan's... Um, uh, production company. Yeah. Okay. And there, I can also give you a link to Legally High. Um, this is this is uh, Dan's production company, um, Amos Pictures. And I, I think, I think that name has uh, the name Amos has tied in very interestingly with. Um, who is, I didn't know it at the time, but it, uh, the man Amos was to become my all-time hero. Um, <laughs> and this is the Amos. Well, this is him. This is the Amos that I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, see this Amos? 
Uh, is this being videoed or is it uh, being um, uh, This is being audio? videoed, yeah. Uh, I mean, there will be an audio feed uh, of this as well, but right now it is video. So anybody okay, so watching... This, this, is my, this is my Bible. Um, yep. This book is, uh, is called um, Preference. Preference, Belief, and Similarity. And it is uh, um, uh, written by Emma Tversky and ed edited, edited by Eldar Shafir, which are... Uh, you know, sort of the two. Um, uh, what is it about? What, it what is, is about it? it is about the mathematics of psychology. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's about uh, uh, calculating and maybe even predicting how we think. It is at the very foundation of um, how. Uh, uh, of the difference between uh, human thinking and rational agents. And maybe you want to ask me... Um, what is the difference between... What is thinking? a rational agent? Yeah, um, I, well, yeah, I guess. What is a rational agent? Okay, so a rational agent is a piece of code that oh. is used, that has a behavior. Um, it... I, I think that its most important manifestation is in the simulation of markets. So you want okay. to be able to predict a market. Yeah. You write you write this um, uh, this this grand, um, massively parallel um, simulator where every little bit of code represents a every um, outcome decision maker. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which, which either buys or sells is exposed. Every decision maker is exposed to different kinds of information yep. and they make a decision according to um, their algorithm, uh, the algorithm that they're running in this, and the information that they've been exposed to. Um, so they, uh, it, they're often called autonomous agents. Okay. But autonomous agents does not capture the fact that they are pieces of code piece of code do not um they don't care about uh you know what time of day it is if they're hungry if they're depressed if their girlfriend left them they have if, limited uh, parameters to work within essentially right. they're very cold they're they're they are rational agents yep. kind of i think the i think the um, when you think about a rational agent you should be thinking about um agent Smith, Smith. I yes, I, I, I watched The Matrix again uh, on Sunday, funny enough, actually. Okay, okay, <laughs> right. So that's, that's Agent Smith is a rational agent, and mm, when all of these um, very, very high um, uh, maintenance simulations, uh, I, I probably Neil Ferguson needs a mention here because he's the one who has been in the headlines recently because he runs autonomous agent simulations for um, predicting various outcomes of COVID-19. Ah, so, yes, I see. Professor Neil Ferguson. Yeah. UK Professor would have halved, it's halved the coronavirus death toll by locking down a week earlier. Um, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, how did he do that? He ran an autonomous agent um, simulation of of uh this, of, of the kind that that every one of the agents acting within that um is uh is a rational agent yeah uh the the problem is that when you want to try and predict markets and the way they will behave and you give it to uh, um, a very large population of rational agents, they make rational decisions, mm -hmm. but humans don't. So the computations go completely wrong. Yeah, We have no ability to predict markets because of the difference between rational agents and human behavior. Yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, and that is um, the title of, uh, of, of a famous book called the... Um, Predictably rational. But the book that you uh, just showed a minute ago, is that, um, I mean, that looks, is that quite old? Like, um, um, that was, uh, 
that's published. Yeah, that's 2003. Oh, okay. Okay. I wasn't sure because the photo on the front just looked. Yeah. And, 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 um, uh, uh, he, or a lot of this work was done with a psychologist from the Hebrew university called Daniel Hanneman. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of him? Daniel he got Hanneman. the Nobel prize for economics. Okay. Um, uh, his, his, uh, the book that he wrote for layman is, is called, uh, thinking fast, thinking slow. Yeah. And, um, uh, uh, and the book, the professional book, I think that he wrote uh, is, is called Decision Making Under Uncertainty. Yeah. Um, Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky got the call to receive the Nobel Prize in economics on the same day for <laughs> the same work. It's just yeah. that by the time that it, they had to go um, to um, Sweden, to yeah. Sweden, right? Um, to, to receive the prize, um, Amos had died. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, so, he, so you, you, don't, you can't get a, a Nobel Prize posthumously, but, but no. he came as close as oh, possible. No. Mm -hmm. have, you, uh, have, do you have, have you written any books or do you have any plans to write? Um, I... Uh, yeah, I, I've written, I've written them, um, but uh, uh, intentionally I, I wrote them, you know, with a stick uh, in in the sand on a beach, so that uh, so, so they when we washed away. Say, I, 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 the 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 I no, I do, I do have plans. I, I have, I have um, uh, aspirations. Ooh. Because, I mean, how many, um, because you've discovered by now quite a lot of, a lot of compounds and with your notoriety and all the, you know, the Guardian and the Haaretz and all the, all the various, various attention that you've had on yourself from it, I imagine you could probably write somewhat of a, of a Bible for, um, for the psychonauts, for the people who are into the legal highs. That's right. And what I, so I think, I think that we are, um, we, we are no longer, a, a book doesn't change with, o, o, over time and over experience and a, um, and a, a, a database does. So I think that if you want to, if you have a, an epiphany mm -hmm. that you want to enshrine in some kind of, um, lasting, um, resonating um, uh, way, I think that today's uh, way of doing it is not publishing it in, in a book. It's publishing it in code on, uh, on GitHub. Well, um, interesting. So, yeah. so I would say that with a compound, there should be a, a, an, an app or a mm -hmm. button on an app that allows you uh, allows every uh, everyone using it to upload their experience where did they get it um what does it look like what did it feel like what was their experience and somehow the community can um feed off of that collective experience being accumulated in the cloud yeah. and make continuously um uh uh, shifting and refining um, uh, conclusions yep. towards when that compound should be used. When is it beneficial? When is it uh, harmful? Because yeah, I was going to say that. Hmm? Also, no, no. Uh, j just you instantly made me think this is the perfect answer for harm reduction, really. Yeah. But the, the one size fits all um, credo is. Is <clears throat> is too clunky for our current um, state of being. Yeah. The, 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 what's happened is that um, let's say let's let's think about uh, evolution as um, going into the kitchen, 
to make an omelet. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and then, uh, so you put the music on, you start drinking and you open the eggs and, da, 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 and, 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 and things, um, and suddenly, I don't know, um, say you want to make, um, uh, um, you want coffee. So while your um, stove is on, you also put on the, um, uh, the kettle and that pops the fuse and the air conditioner blows and you get really hot. So what do you do? Well, I'll tell you what I do. I take my shirt off because it's really hot. Okay. <laughs> and I want to keep cooking. Yeah. Okay. So that's, I am now, why, but, but why did I have a shirt on in the first place? I mean, the shirt isn't, <laughs> I, I didn't, I, I wasn't born with it. So you see, man and shirts and pots and pans and the domestication of chickens and eggs and everything in the tree is something, is, is, it, it, it involves our deviation from um, uh, 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 the environment in which we evolved. But is that not part of our evolution also? The things around us evolving with us in the sense of, because our brains are, are, the, are the, I guess our biggest tool or weapon. And from that, these are extensions of ourselves. You know, like people say our phones are essentially an evolution of, of us. Yes, but it's not, that evolution is not genetic. Mm -hmm. You yes. are correct. But we have transcended from genetic evolution to mimetic evolution. And mimetic evolution goes much faster. How long does it take to create a new human? How long does it take to create a new idea? Well, yeah. about... Um, I, I've got three children. Um, uh, the youngest one is 10 years old. Uh, he'll be ready in about um, 15 years. Um, uh, I, I, and so, at, at, yeah, maybe, you know, 25, between 25 and 35, perhaps, um, uh, you're ready for the world. Uh, yeah. But to get an idea, um, uh, so let's take, where's that book? I have, uh, uh, well, I, was, I was just reading um, graph databases. Where is it? Uh, <laughs> books all around you. Is that maths on the door? I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh, uh, well. Uh, you in, uh, you're in Canada right now, right? Or, or is it day, daytime? Oh. <laughs> Dr. Z has gone off to uh, get a big book. I was just reading um, graph databases, right? This has been- Casual reading, um, as you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so, so it, it was about, I don't know, it was a couple of years between version um, 1.0 and uh, 2.0 um, of, of that. Uh, and that's, that's created quite a stir in the world of databases. Um, and, uh, uh, but, because the um, uh, because the information spreads at the well, uh, let's say the slowest bottleneck is um, the time it takes from me to have an idea to utter it into the microphone. Um, that's the speed of sound. Yeah. Okay then it transmits itself over the ether um, uh, uh, at the speed of light. Mm -hmm. It gets to you. And, and I think that your thought processes, uh, some people say that they're the, 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 that they're the speed of ions, um, really? which the speed of, um, uh, you know, chemical gradients, mm -hmm. and other people, the, 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 um, uh, some neuro um, physiologists think that there is a lot of uh, light signaling inside the brain yep. that 
uh, so, but, but, but the bottleneck there is the speed of sound. So um, the, um, the, so ideas travel at either the speed of light or the speed of sound. But then you have to manifest and make those ideas. I mean, the speed. <laughs> Genes, in any case, you know, they, 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 they're, they can develop much more slowly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Even the fastest organism that can go through an entire generation, and uh, um, uh, like the bacteria that make our, um, uh, or, or the yeasts that make like COVID nineteen, you know, something like that is. Replicating. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but but, but let, let, let's say our the the the, um, uh, the yeasts that either make our um, our our ethanol or that make our antibiotics. Yeah. Candida? Um, uh, uh, no, Candida is a, is a, is a multicellular. Um, okay. But it, they, they, will, they, they have a generation life of like half an hour. Well. Okay. That's, that, that's the shortest you can get. And to transmit an idea um, mm -hmm. can take mere seconds. Uh -huh. so, yes. Yes, it is all evolution. As uh, Herbert Spencer was wise to the different types of evolution, cultural evolution, um, uh, uh, ideological evolution, as well as genetic evolution. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I think that we feel good in the kind of situation that we evolved to feel good on the African savannah. So everything stripped down, we're uh, in our most pure kind of, um, yeah, stripped back, almost cathartic, uh, the, the state without any of these outside stimulus. Do you think that's the ultimate? I, 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 believe, I believe that that is the situation in which... Um, uh, it, 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 in which we evolved to feel that, okay, if we can see um, um, a big body of water um, not far away from us and we can see grasslands where we know we can find um, um, uh, gazelle, and, well, gazelle yeah. right? And, and, um, and, and, and the wind is blowing in our hair and, 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 the, and we don't have um, too much pressure. Um, uh, we don't have a, a deadline looming. I think that's the situation in which, a, a, in which uh, the human animal feels right. I think that in <laughs> today's uh, lifestyle, where um, we um, we're worried about the taxes and we're worried about um, whether we'll uh, um, you know how we'll do on the interview. We're worried about what that person thinks about us, and uh, we'll, we'll, whether we'll get um, um, how we're going to pay that fine that we got. And, <laughs> and, and, and you know, there's there's so many things to worry about. There's so many deadlines in one day. Uh, there are so many stressors yeah. that just normal life doesn't feel. To the brain, normal. No, I you think, feel overloaded completely. Yeah, it's overloaded. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, I, and I think it's not surprising that people are trying to um, to adjust that feeling of of, of pressure yeah. with some chemical help mm -hmm. from the outside uh, in, in order to make them feel what they naturally feel is good yeah because the stimuli coming at them from all directions tell them something's not right with your life do you think that that can be do you, like how do you balance that between a, a healthy stimuli uh stimulus to um obviously people then become dependent on substances and that escapism and, and taking uh chemicals to essentially normalize that you know you're, you're you're taking you're not taking heroin 
uh, it's, well, yeah, people are taking heroin because they want to feel normal because they want to balance their, you know, their brain out. Because they want to stop feeling the pain. Yeah, that that's feel. it. The, yeah. So yeah. Uh, how, how do you, um, how do you separate that from one thing and like having the one, the positive experience of it? Like, yeah, I want to experience being how I should be naturally feeling wild on the planes. I'm going to take this thing and it's going to make me uh, unwind. I'm going to dance. I'm going to feel the pressures of society, my job that on one hand. And then on the other hand, how do I, how do you balance, uh, separate that from, I'm going to take drugs and get fucked up and you know ruin my life. I, what I do is I, define a metric. What is it that I want to achieve? What okay. is it that I want to measure? And that's what, and that's what I measure. And then I think that um, it, it would be interesting to find, for example, how um, I, today you're not allowed to prescribe compounds for performance enhancement. Um, uh, you, if, if you're taking something, it's supposed to be for uh, the uh, correction of some kind of ailment or malady. Mm -hmm. um, to fix, but, it, to treat something, essentially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. To treat a disease, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, but, but by the time you have a disease, that's already like, um, you're so far gone. You, you'd never get there had you just, you know, titrated small doses of, of, of um, beneficial adjustments to your day-to-day um, -day and you wouldn't, and you, you know, you'd make it to the bus on time and you'd make um, the deadline, you'd use just the right words in, in what you had to say to this person and that person, yeah, yeah. in that email and that email. So if, for example, we took, um, um, we ask people, what do you want to achieve? And they would say, well, um, uh, when I get up in the morning, I want um, breakfast to be on the table and, um, and, and all the kids to be smiling and prepared for uh, their day at school. By 8.30, I want everybody out of the house at, um, uh, by 8.45. And, and I want that to, you know, everything to be perfect in that mm -hmm. way, right? Um, uh, if it's a weekday, um, then let's try and administer different compounds and measure how close or how far you get with the administration of, of various compounds to your goal. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, but healthily, I mean, is this? Do you do you see that this is possible um, whilst maintaining, um, you know, not yes, overdoing let's it? Let's talk about let's talk about quantities. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's think about the input. How much do you consume? How much stuff do you consume per day? Okay. So. Um, you got up in the morning, maybe you had a slice of toast with a bit of egg and some butter. Yep. Okay. How much, how much food is that in weight? Like you're talking a few, yeah, like 50 grams, hundred grams. Um, more like 250 grams. Okay. Right. And then, and then, um, and then, um, that gave you energy and then, um, but you're feeling kind of, uh, you have a meeting, you, you have to, you have to face, you, you, you've woken up at your, um, uh, girlfriend's house or your wife's house and you have to face her, your mother-in-law and, 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 and you feel really, you know, um, anxious, anxious about that. Yeah. 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 So, um, so you, you pop into the bathroom and you do. 20 milligrams of, um, of say, 2-FTCK. Yeah. Would so you for anyone who doesn't know, uh, that's a dissociative like ketamine. Right. But I mean, it, 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 it makes one relatively happy. Yeah. I would say. Okay. Um, and, and so, so what 
is the physiological effect of 20 milligrams of a compound consumed, which has changed your behavior, uh, compared to 250 grams of a of, of food consumed, <laughs> yeah. which which has changed, which has given you the energy for moving your body around, obviously, but yeah. but the the intake <laughs> per mass of um, uh, of of compounds uh, at a physiological level, it's it's completely neg negligible. <laughs> the body, the, the the liver doesn't um, uh, doesn't care. So that, there, there's no noticeable like or long term effect or damage, I guess, if you were to. I, I don't think. So. I don't think so. I think. I think if there is, if there is, it is it is rendered by the ripples of the ramifications of your behavior mm -hmm. spreading out from radiating out from you towards other people and then coming back to you. That is where um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the harms that are rendered by the change of behavior, the drugs induce, that's where they persist. And you also of the people around you. You also have the um, the risk of of people wanting more because you know you say you have twenty milligrams, uh, just like you you know you have your toast and your eggs. But some people they they're not happy with just their toast and their eggs, and you know they they get the craving from the food and they they'll just eat and eat and eat. And you know someone might have that twenty milligrams and go, oh great, I feel you know I that anxiety is gone. I feel great. And then they're like, you know what, forty milligrams or you know. Yeah, and it yeah, just yeah. ups and ups, you know. Right, 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 right. And then, if you if you really are loyal to your chart, you see the point at which the consumption turns from beneficial to harmful. So it's yes. an upward slope, which becomes a downward slope at a, certain, at a certain dosage. Yeah, and that's when you should stop. Um, uh, but there, then doesn't there, ra logic and rationale kind of that's affected in itself by the by the drugs so how, how do you you know if, if this was completely legal and uh, what what kind of uh, what methods would there be to stop people from getting to that point where they go like that well I could conceptualize a um, a pill that is that has these little valves that are um, uh, potentiated by a signal coming from my phone. And I swallow the pill, and then I um, my uh, my I tell my phone what I want to achieve. Um, the pill will be reading uh, certain physiological signs. <laughs> uh, because it's inside my body and it will be excreting what I need if it has different compartments inside. It can, um, uh, uh, it, it, you know, potentially uh, in this utopian um, uh, technology, this pill could uh, give you just the right amount of neurotransmitter in order to adjust your mindset to the goals that you have, but it's not you making the decision. It's the cloud making the decision. <laughs> um, uh, but even if you wanted to, technically, it's just following what, what your body's saying. So therefore, it doesn't matter if you and, take 10 and, of these pills. And the goals that you want to achieve, right? So, mm -hmm. it, so, so yeah. it would, maybe it would pump you up with some, some more adrenaline or testosterone if you're racing to, um, um, to catch a bus or to catch yeah. a train. And then you won't be late. But once you're on the train, it'll stop pumping it because there's no point in you being wired while you're sitting there. It, it'll it'll probably um, it, you know um, release some endorphins when you're yeah. on the train on time, so that you then can you... sit down and be relaxed. And yeah, yeah. So it's it's and and I think that Michaeli Chicksuk Michaeli, um, the uh, the. Uh, very well-known uh, psychologist from U University of Chicago, Department of Psychology. Um, he showed that uh, mood will, uh, he, he wrote a book 
um, he, he coined the, the term flow. Have you heard of him? No, I, I, I have heard of him, yes, but um, I'm, I, I have, have heard of him by name, but I'm not actually aware of what he has done. Um, um, I've not heard of the so term yeah, flow. He coined, he coined the term flow. Just a I can pull this up. <laughs> no. Oh, you're pulling it up? Okay. Yeah, I can just get this up now. Let's have a look. Did you say the um, University of um, Chicago? Uh, Chicago, yeah. Michele Chicksuk Michele. You might be. You might beat me to this. Oh no, I'm not trying. I'm just waiting for you to um, do. Michele. Michele. Yeah, I. I have him. Yeah. Okay. Um, Michele Chicksuk Born 1934 as a Hungarian-American psychologist, recognized the psychological concept of flow, a highly yeah. focused mental state conducive to productivity. Ah, in a flow state, of course, yeah. yeah. Right. And, and, and that has, a, he showed that is to be measured every five minutes. Um, is it so possible to consistently keep that? And do you think with um uh, is there a kind of pill or would it be actually of course you can conceptualize it but do you think it is possible that you could make something like that work yeah i think so interesting i think so i think i think that the main barrier towards that is um society's openness to mm -hmm. um adjusting our mood with things that are not either um, alcohol <laughs> or alcohol. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah the, 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 uh, um, you know, the, um, the challenges that we have to face that, the, the, that are thrown at us um, throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Um, are, are, are quite, you know, frequent. I mean, how many, how many different things do you have, uh, challenges mm -hmm. do you have to negotiate um, throughout your day? So many. And, you know, as we've been speaking about this, it, it got me thinking, every single person, you know, I feel that I have a lot, but then I don't know anybody that I speak to that doesn't say, that they are constantly facing different challenges and that, you know, that life is just stressful, that society and everyday living, like, you, you know, you don't meet anybody, you, you know, generally when you ask anybody how they are, most people have day-to-day -day con consistent, constant stress and challenges. Right. Now I, um, uh, wanted to, um, be really on the ball for this interview, mm -hmm. right? So I knew that I would have to um, um, uh, pay certain bills that I, I, I knew I had to get that off my plate so that I wouldn't have to worry about it when I was on this interview, but I was really tired. So I, I took a napper um, mm -hmm. uh, about 10 hours ago. Um, Paid all the bills, and then I was extremely wired, and I said, "Oh, well, there's an interview coming, and I have to get some some sleep." Yeah, to, you know, um, it uh, is the morning for you, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah, I have to get some sleep. So, but I'm really wired. I can't sleep. So I took something to correct that, right? And obviously, if I would have taken too much, that would have been I. I wouldn't be here yeah. having this interview. I wouldn't be chatty. Um, um, then uh, I, I, I took um, uh, my, my, uh, my daily microdose um, in order to get me uh, to, to become a little bit more bubbly and sociable. And, and, um, and if you were to, I don't know, bring up something that I was um, uh, terribly ashamed of. Maybe I'd reach <laughs> out into the cabinet and, and, and <laughs> get something else to, to circumvent that. But 
you know, you don't, you, if you want, if what you want to do is, is, um, uh, is, is hang a picture on the wall, then you reach out for a hammer. But if you want to unscrew a light bulb, the hammer is not going to help you. <laughs> no, not the, the right really thing for the right hammer. purpose. Exactly. Exactly. In neurophysiology, as well as in, um, uh, you know, um, uh, um, just day to day, um, uh, challenges. It's, 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 uh, the, the mechanics are, you, you need the right tool for the right, yeah. for, for the right job. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find though you have this, uh, outlook, how, how do you find that sits with people around you? I mean, um, you you've got a family, obviously, um, are they, are they understanding of your, because it's not the norm, you know, like, I mean, I'm sure people listening are like, well, you know, I don't want that. Some people will agree. And I think there will be a lot of other people that disagree. And, you know, that because of their association, I guess, with, with drugs or with any, with chemicals, you know, I don't even want to use the word drugs, just uh, anything that alters mood altering substances. Um, yeah. How do you find that? How do you find your well, outlook fits in with everybody around you? I, I, I think that, it's very much like the rules that uh, people have for whether or not you're allowed or not allowed to drink at home. Mm -hmm. yep. How many people, do you know people that drink at home? Uh -huh. or, do you know people who are not allowed to drink, that do drink, but if you, you, know, if you want to drink, go to the pub or at the office or yep. you know, just not at home, not near the children, not, mm -hmm. you know. Um, th those rules apply uh in many people's lives uh, as do they do they certainly do in mine um uh but i mean if you want to go if like you said if you want to go out and um you're just going to an interview or a meeting and you you just want something to give you a little bit of a lift just a little bit of a lift uh do the people around you understand that 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 you're using that as a tool for a pot of to kind of fine tune yourself rather than as a way of just getting fucked up. Some of them do. Yeah. And some of them don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, I don't, um, I generally don't like to hide the fact that, um, um, that I really would like to adjust my, um, neurophysiology to the situation at hand. Yeah. Many people feel that it's not fair. It's not. It's certainly not acceptable. I, um, I see. Socially acceptable. There's definitely. Uh, yeah. There definitely. Yeah. Um. Uh. I. 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 I'm a very data-driven kind of guy. I say if it works, then do it. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um. We actually, we, we've got to wrap it up fairly soon. Um, okay. But like a, a, every single subject and com, uh, conversation point has already like just sparked so many other, uh, you know, possible paths and dialogues. I'd love, I want to go, want to go down with you. So, you know, and explore. So I, I'd like yeah. to do it again. Um, I, I kind of, I'm interested though, and I'm sure I, there's a few comments already uh, asking about like, oh, natural legal drugs and about the cap cat plant being found in places and um what where, what do you feel is happening right now with the um with legal highs or or, chem, or chemicals you know as someone that's right in the midst of the throes of it do you think that it's going to be you're going to see a change where it's going to get legalized you know where you are right now do you think people will be able to fine-tune themselves people will be able to recreationally uh, get high if they want and you know like i know new zealand that was it. That's a possible thing. Or do you think yeah. it's going to go down the UK route where it will be draconian and strict? I, I think that a combination of all possibilities is going to be the final outcome is going to be a smorgasbord of, of, hmm. of, of, of everything. Yeah. Um, as it is today, really, yeah. um, you can't, I mean, you go, you, um, you get on a, 
KLM business flight and you fly to Saudi Arabia and they give you that little um, little house with uh, the liqueur in it, except they you've landed in Saudi Arabia, so they empty out the liqueur. Huh. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that, no. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's the world that we live in today. So, so, so um, uh, do you think particular countries or any of the major countries are going to go down the route of, you know, I, 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 Personally, I think that the, mo the what's important for me to do is to um, demonstrate where we can utilize the plant's inherent abilities to uh, con to do biochemistry, yeah. so that we can create our own um, psychoactives in planta. For example. I believe that if I um, uh, if I took the um, uh, the ketone version of mescaline, which is yeah. um, uh, two, three, four, or two, three, five um, uh, methoxy. Um, um, uh, uh, then <laughs> ethyl uh, amine, and I were to change the amine to a ketone yep. and feed that to a um, to a spinach or a uh, or a lettuce plant. I think that the plant would convert it into mescaline. So it could you could feed it this. Um, and then essentially in that conversion, you could extra, would you have to extract that mescaline? No, you could I, just I could at home feed it and I would... just eat the salad and then you'd have mescaline. Yeah. Huh. I, think, I think that that, and that would be a way that would, you could, the, what you're feeding to the plant is not psychoactive. Yeah. Um, the plant is cooperating with you. Yep. It's the natural process. Mm -hmm. that is creating something that you can then use to adjust um, your mood. Yeah. You know, it, it's not something that can be done en masse, so it can't create... Um, Criminal uh, enterprises and empires, as they like exactly, to say. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. And, and I, I, I think that that will be the ultimate solution, actually. <laughs> That would be pretty crazy. Could you, in theory, would you be able to uh, regulate the um, the strength or the you know the quantity? Would how would you be able to know that? You know, I believe would, so. Would it... I, believe so. I, I I look at I look at the way that uh, I look at the sugar industry, mm -hmm. um, cane sugar and beet sugar, and I and I see and even and and, and the cocaine industry. I I think that. Um, um, those secondary metabolites are very um, uh, uh, carefully uh, and successfully biosynthesized in the plants by the people growing them. Um, yeah. if, you, if you look at the history of the amount of THC appearing in cannabis sativa and indica, you can see that it really is um, uh, subject to how much we want in there. We do, yes. you know, it has been, the breeders have had uh, a lot of success in um, changing the plant's metabolism uh, according to the demands of the market. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm guessing, obviously, you probably don't want to give too much away. Is this something that you're, you're working on right now and that we can see? Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah, no, <laughs> this is this was covered by, uh, this was touched on by um, uh, Jonah Brunette in a, in a podcast that, okay, so let me give you two more links here. Um, uh, so we have the article in The Walrus. Um, <clears throat> And 
I will put that in our chat. So Jonah wrote this article uh, about a compound that I invented in order to um, uh, mitigate the use of alcohol. But in but then he did a podcast. Do you want the link to the podcast as well? Um, so if you send me that after, what I would do is I'll, I'll send put the link to anything into the into the upload of this. So this so, is why it's so hard to legalize recreational drugs. Right. So this is, this is, a, this is a, an interview that Jonah Burnett did with me. And then um, he, did, he appeared in a podcast um, where he mentioned my idea of being able to make your own drugs um, that are customized to your own personal needs and use um, at home, in plants, on your countertop. Um, uh, the sense I'm already uh, already sucked into the uh, this article. I'm going to um, okay. stop the sharing of this, and I'll put this on the po on the page. Anyone listening should read read this. <laughs> oh well, um, I I'm I've already yeah I'm pretty blown away to be honest, man. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, for for any I guess I guess you're you're kind of the the argument for why for that it, 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 it works you know the fact that you you're creating these things you know you have a great functioning brain um you're obviously achieving things let's revisit that point in 50 years because when i'm 100 years old if i can give this interview again with the same vitality yep then you can say oh well it's definitely look i'm 50 years old okay for a 50 year old yeah I'm, I'm smart, I'm happy, I'm not too fat, I'm not too thin, I'm, I'm not too rich, not too poor, I'm, I'm doing okay, but I'm only 50. Yeah. If I can be this way in another 50 years, then I'm definitely onto something. Yes, definitely. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. hopefully we can do oh. it in 50 years. Yeah, but, um... yeah, seriously, <laughs> years. <laughs> well, you know what, you know what, every 20, Oh, I was going to say, next time you come back to the Netherlands, you should probably, uh, you, you should probably come and we'll, we'll do one in, in person. Yeah. Okay. Come, come to okay. mine and, uh, yeah. Okay. But, but I will hold you to that for the 20 year thing for sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's uh, it. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Is there any, uh, do you want to give a shout out to your website or any, anything, um, anyone who wants to check out no, what, no, what you've done? No, no, no. I, I, I think, I think we covered all the bases. I think Brilliant. it's been fun. I think it's been fast. I think it's been, um, uh, it, it's been, I don't know. Um, uh, um, uh, refreshing. Yeah. Right. Definitely. I, I feel, I, I'm, I feel I'm going to walk out here with a spring on my, in my step. It's the evening and I've good. got a lot to think about. Good. 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 <laughs> yeah. good. Thank you so Excellent. much. Uh, let, let's do it again and, uh, keep in touch, man. Good to speak to you. All right. Very happy. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was very, very interesting. There was obviously a lot going on. Dr. Z is a very interesting man with so many, so many fascinating ideas. We are at episode eight. So a big shout out to everybody who has been watching all of the episodes. All of them have been super, super interesting so far. I just want to give a shout out to THCC and make sure you cop some clothes of theirs. They're shutting down, support the hemp trading company, unfuck the world. We've got a lot of stuff going on right now. So everybody stay positive and tune in in the next few weeks. We're getting a doctor who's uh, actually working on the NHS advisory panel. Uh, so it will be a kind of COVID-19 Corona centric podcast coming up. Uh, we've got, a, a range of exciting uh, people on board. So please subscribe. If you're watching the YouTube video, subscribe and share. If you're listening to this on Facebook right now, please go onto our Facebook page, hit the like button, and please check out Shifty Perspective on YouTube and Instagram. We need to grow. Um, I'm doing this out of a labor of love. I just enjoy it. And yeah, it's great fun. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you so much, everybody. See you next week.